Welcome back to CCTV's News Bulletin with the following headlines. The Q&A on REACH, an interview on REACH authorization and the statement of the day. Yesterday's Q&A on REACH provided interesting insights, so let's have a look. Normally though there is a fair amount of discussion that goes beforehand before either a renomination or a new nomination to uh, provide the member state with advice on what's needed. So uh, in the current climate with authorizations, we would need an intake of uh, experienced exposure assessors, occupational hygienists, whereas in the past for classification and labeling, that emphasis would have been much more on classical toxicologists, reprotoxicologists in particular. So we try and direct the member states uh, to, to where we want them to look for. It's up to them to nominate the people they think are best fitted. Uh, the selection process is done by the management board, advised by the committee chairman. So that's, that's the way it works. First of all, we must remember that authorization is granted, uh, in general, I would anticipate, is mainly granted on the socioeconomic analysis route, which means two things. First, you have to demonstrate conclusively that there are no alternatives. Because if there are alternatives, you will not get authorization. And if there are no alternatives, you have to demonstrate that your risks are minimized and then that the benefits outweigh the costs of the risks. ECHA at the moment has been uh, working for the last two and a half years on quite a large research project into costs of risks, uh, looking at cancer, um, infertility, developmental toxicity, and skin sensitization or dermatology issues. These results are currently being discussed in a, in a fairly small uh, peer group network, and they will be peer reviewed, and it's anticipated that they will be published within the next six months or so. I can imagine that going forward, once these are known, it becomes much easier for companies to think upfront to work out upfront if their benefits are going to outweigh the costs of the risks. And then perhaps we will see the difference between those two valued amounts reducing. My personal view is that industry needs to be very clear. This is a kind of license to operate, but it is a license to operate only if there are well justified reasons for doing so. The emphasis of authorization is on substitution. At the moment, we do not know by how much the benefits have to be greater than the costs of the risks. So we don't know if the risk assessment, sorry, if the socioeconomic analysis committee would accept 10 euro as a good enough difference between the two or 100 or 1,000. We just simply don't know. And I guess we'll only learn as we go down the road. Also, today's interview focuses on REACH, especially REACH authorization. I spoke with Grace Mannering Penna and Linda Jean Cockcroft. REACH registration, evaluation, and authorization of chemicals. Especially the authorization part is interesting, as you can see on the cartoon. Industry is lining up there for an uncertain future. Are they going to hell or can they enter heaven? I talk about authorization today with one of the companies that is in line currently for authorization, Dominion's Color Corporation from Canada. Grace Menarang Pena from DCC. Also joining us for today's conversation is Linda Jean Cockcroft. You can request a pre-submission information session, which is informal at the European Chemical Agency in Helsinki. How does this help you in the dossier preparation? It gives you an opportunity to discuss with ECHA, with your uh, dossier manager and with the various experts within ECHA uh, the details of what it is that you're doing and you're planning to do and they can give you some feedback on uh, and perhaps some advice if they feel that you need it on different aspects of, of, of the way in which the application is going. Well, in, in our situation, we found that very beneficial. We were able to understand the methodologies that would be involved in the uh, process. Can you tell us a little bit about the trialogue meeting? These trialogues are really valuable to industry. It gives industry the feeling that 
they get a chance to have their case actually heard. They get a chance to, dis to interact with the people who are forming an opinion on their particular application. Based on your experiences, do you have any recommendation for other companies? The recommendation would be to keep all lines of communication open and to keep your customers close and very well informed. It's one of my uh, recommendations to people who are considering authorization that they start very early on in the process with a high level analysis of the costs and the benefits of the continued use. Please watch the complete interview on our website and YouTube channel. I haven't seen TJ yet, so let's find out what he's doing. Hey TJ! TJ! Hello, what are you doing? Hi there, I'm enjoying myself at a swimming pool. This is a very unique swimming pool. It's a junior Olympic sized swimming pool. 25 meters long. A very special engineering feat. Especially for its time. Remember 1929? During the decades that followed that, many famous stars have been in this swimming pool, including Johnny Weissmuller, Olympic gold medalist and Tarzan. Happy to see that you're enjoying yourself, but shouldn't you be on your way to the social event location? Sorry, you didn't want to tell me where to go. You told me I should go fishing for information. I think a swimming pool is great for that. Today we will dive for the pearls of the North American legislation. One of these pearls is California. California has been raising the bar of chemical control regulation already for decades. I will discuss this with Lynn Bergeson of the Washington-based law firm Bergeson & Campbell. Lynn, very welcome here. Thank you, Tirad. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Lynn, um, you have a very solid reputation in chemical regulatory work and as a program advisory committee member of Campcon, you always advise me on the latest developments in North America. Mm -hmm. Could you update uh, us on the latest developments in California, concluding with a statement of the day? Certainly, Tirad. And there is big news in California. The safer consumer product regulations are now fully in place. They are an innovative chemical regulatory program that focuses on the chemical component of products marketed to consumers and it will have significant domestic and international implications for the rest of the chemical world. My statement of the day is that the safer consumer product regulations will set the standard for chemical regulation, next generation chemical regulation for years to come. Please let us know what you think about it. Um, Lynn, thank you very much for being here and thank you for your support. My pleasure, Tiered. Today's forecast guides us to the Americas, starting off with USA and Canada, then zooming in to sunny California, after which we make a small sidestep to TTIP. In the afternoon we go further down south to Middle and South America with a spotlight on Brazil. Today's grand finale is about chemical industry towards a more sustainable future with green chemistry and bio-based economy. Thank you for watching and enjoy this evening's social event.